When Windy told us they were launching their new Camira 40 RS at the Cannes Yachting Festival, we weren't exactly enthused because we understood it was pretty much based on the existing 39. But this boat here is about as close to a new boat as a modified platform could possibly be. Now it is of course based on the same hull, it's just called the 40 in order to distinguish it from the old boat. But as you can see, we've got a nice big new T-top up there. We've also got uh, subtle changes stylistically, like these hull windows. They're straight as they move forward on the 39. Here they've got quite a dynamic little dip that looks quite cool. If we move aft, we'll jump on board at the aft platform and start from there. Here we've got a little hatch that opens up, the ladder comes out and then you can close the hatch down while that's deployed. We've also got these little recessed handles. You've seen those before from Windy to pull yourself out without creating a trip hazard. And here is quite a, a neat little trick. Let's open that up using this button here. Up it comes. We've got tremendous storage in here for your sea bobs, for your various water toys. There we are. Lots of space there. And this is also a hatch that enables you to get down to the engine bay. Now on this boat we've got uh, twin D6440s, you can have 400s as well. Or you can actually, in the SX form, uh, rig this boat with a pair of outboard engines, or triple outboard engines, triple 300s or twin 450s, XTOs. If you do that with the SX version, then obviously the space underneath here is vacated. So then you've got loads more space for toys down below. It's an interesting question actually. We've been speaking to the guys here at Windy. They suggest that actually, if they were to go for the outboard version, then they tend to take the twins because then you have space between them for a hydraulic passerelle. And let's move forward and shut this down so we can illustrate what the sunbed is all about here. Now on a great many Windies, large and small, you walk in on the port side of the cockpit and you're greeted with a nice big open sunbed ahead of a dinette and that's exactly what we see here. The difference here though is that we've got a really easy button here. Push that down and then you can just adjust this backrest as you see fit. That is a nice touch. This obviously drops down into the space so you can use infills and create a proper sun lounger. If I spin around though, this has changed over the 39 too. Now the 39's wet bar came further aft, but they've shortened it to open up this deck space, make it feel easier to navigate. And they've also topped it with a cushion. Now I've actually used this, uh, jump up on there, and this grab rail actually operates as quite a good foot brace. You can just face across to the guys over there, and with this overhead sunroof wide open, it feels like quite a cool place to sit, I have to say. Let's move forward again and what we see up here at the helm and the co-pilot seat, well this is all new furniture and it's quite cool. Let's take a little walk over here, you'll see that the foot alarm goes up and down, now this is interesting. When I tested the 34 Elise I speculated that actually a loftier throttle would be very handy for standing up and driving but the reason they put it on here is because we also have a slide out foot brace down below. If I could just find out where that is, forward, there it is. Hit that button and out that comes. Very easily done. And the principle is that once you've slid that out, you're able to stand, remove this sunroof, this uh, fabric concertina sunroof, and then stand up and helm from there with a decent view of your bow, unencumbered. So that's really nicely thought through that. We've also got space on the dash here for a pair of new Garmin 19 inch plotters. You could trade those in for a single 24 inch plotter, but they look pretty cool as they are. Make really good use of that dash space. And we also have built into this T-top a little flap you'll notice which is open and that enables you to ascend via the traditional uh, through screen windy steps. And we'll do that right now and take a little look. 
Here we have a pair of skylights, so they're unencumbered by cushions. You get light down below regardless of whether people are up here using these. And this has been redesigned too. It's not huge, but it's quite attractive and the elevated uh, headrests are a nice touch. So let's get down below and see where the really chief changes have taken place. Spin around and down we go. And when we pop down into here, let's close this door over. What we have is a proper lounge space forward, proper dining area. And here on the port side, a really good galley. That switch sides over the uh, 39. And it's much larger. We've got a uh, combi oven and microwave there. We've got a wine fridge and an ice maker. Uh, they're optional, I believe. What do we have down here? Let's open this up as well. A really big pull-out fridge there. Plenty of work surface and an induction hob. Quite a posh tap and a big sink down in there. And plenty of storage. They've really worked hard on storage. And what else they've worked hard on? Before I mention that, let's just take a look at this. I really do enjoy that sweep, that curve at the back of the galley. What else they've worked hard on is headroom. This is about 90 mil higher than the deck head on the 39, and it really feels very spacious indeed. Gives you all the access you need to this dining station in the forepeak. And again, we've got storage all the way around here. Really impressive. We've also got uh, down on this leather lined floor, which feels great underfoot. We've got access to the bow thruster. And of course, this table drops down at the push of a button, and then you use infills to turn this into a double berth. But what I really like is the fact that those infills are here. You use the backrest, so you don't actually have to stow dedicated infills away and clog the boat up at all. It's an impressive space. To the starboard side, of course, we have the heads compartment. Again, the headroom is pretty decent, and it's drenched in natural light courtesy of that skylight up on the foredeck we talked about earlier. Good size of shower with a seat. Everything you would want. There's a small window again on the whole side there. You can't really see that from the standing position, but as I say, you get all the natural light you need from up above. So it feels like a pretty good compartment. Again, a bit more storage there. And talking of storage, if we come back here to the steps, you'll see that these lift up. Behind there, we've got plenty of storage on top of this shelf and that compartment there, this uh, door, if you open that up, that space basically goes all the way back to the bulkhead for the engine compartment. So there's masses of space in there. Now let's open up this mid cabin on the starboard side and take a walk in there. It's ice cold in here, thanks to that air conditioning. There's a good size of bed, again, curves. Really beautiful bulkhead linings as well. No glossy fiberglass in here. It's all really nicely done. It feels very good. We've got some nice ambient lighting under there as well. More storage there, more storage here, and additional storage, I think, underneath that changing seat. This will eventually come with a cushion, but not quite yet. We also have the uh, Fusion remote in here, so you can control your own tunes. Plus, of course, you have access to your own climate control. And let's spin around and pop back out here for a second, because there's one other thing I forgot to mention. And it was that uh, air conditioning vent blowing me in the face that reminded me. If we come up here above these high level storage units, you'll see that we've got vents right up at ceiling level, and that's where the air conditioning comes from. It comes right out the top. So you don't get any jets in your face, you simply get the air mixing beautifully. It's a really nice sensation, it's a very thoughtful touch from uh, Windy, I like that a lot. And finally, before we leave this boat, it's worth mentioning that you can trade all this stuff in, plus all that storage under there on the port side, for a third cabin that broadly mirrors the one we just had a look at on the starboard side. I reckon that's a pretty impressive modification on the existing 39 Chimera. And to be honest, as a Windy, it has to be, because Windy fans can be quite a purist and passionate bunch. And the 39, well, that was a very effective boat, much loved. So if you're going to put a T-top on top of it, 
you need to make sure that T-top adds something valuable. If you're going to rejig the furniture, it needs to be for a very good reason. And for the most part, I think it's quite successful in that regard. Now, we haven't yet had this out on the water, but as things stand, it looks to me like the new 40 Camira RS is a job pretty well done.